today we're going to talk about leader member exchange. And you know you've made it big when your theory has an abbreviation, LMX. We are working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership, a communication perspective. I will put links to that in the description below this video. So let's get into it. So this model is an outgrowth of the vertical dyad linkage model also by Grain and his associates. And like that model, the LMX takes a relational approach to leadership. This is all about how the leader and the member relate to each other. It's about that exchange, if you will, that relational exchange. Unlike vertical dyad linkage model, this model moves beyond the idea of in-groups and out groups, which is either you're in or you're out. And this focuses more on the quality of relationship between individual leader and the specific follower. So that's the leader member part of the title. Using surveys to assess the leader member relationship can range from low LMX to high LMX. So there's a continuum here. You can be relatively close to your leader in a variety of ways. It's not an either or situation. So let's look more into the benefits because one of the great things about leader member exchange is the benefits that you get with high quality relationships with your follower, your followers. There is a clear link between the individual and the leaders and the Benefits for high quality relationships with those followers are numerous. So first of all, more productivity, both on quality and quantity for the follower. The followers are more satisfied, less likely to quit. They have better mental health. They're more satisfied with the supervisor, more committed to the organization, more likely to go beyond their duties to help out. They're more successful in their careers overall. They're more likely to provide honest feedback when necessary. They're highly motivated and they're more influential in their organizations among many other benefits. And the opposite is true for low LMX followers. So if I had a magic wand, and I often do teach um, workshops in professional settings about communication and leadership skills, and I'm telling you, if I had a magic wand, like what's one approach we can take as leaders to make everything better? develop high quality relationships with the people that are on your team. And when you do, you will experience all of these benefits for that follower. And then they in turn will make the team stronger overall. So early on, the researchers changed their opinions early on. Remember this came out of the vertical dyad linkage model. And initially researchers believed that leaders could only have a few good relationships with their followers. But then they changed their mind and they said, you know, they really should make every effort to build high quality relationships with all of their followers. They saw this really as the leader's duty because of the incredible benefits that came along with high quality relationships. So if they're the leader, the supervisor working in an organization, it's part of their job to maximize performance. So they have to make that effort. Now, high quality relationships are not assured by the leader's effort, but leaders must quote, make the offer as Johnson and Hackman explained. So you can't make the follower also have a good relationship with you, but the leader has to do their part. They have to attempt to develop a high quality relationship over time. And relationships have phases according to the research. And they start just like any other relationship. First phase is a stranger. So when the leader and the follower meet, they're basically strangers who merely occupy whatever roles they were hired to do in the first place. They have a, a leader member dynamic there according to their job descriptions. And the next phase over time is acquaintanceship, just like you develop in your own personal life with other people. That's where both parties begin more productive task relationships. And then they also share more social information. So there might be a little bit of small talk about their lives outside of work and what's been going on with them. So they have an acquaintanceship. And the third level, which is all the way up the scale on the high quality relationship scale, is the partnership. And that's where the two parties exert mutual influence. They share a variety of task and social information. They show mutual trust, respect, and a sense of obligation toward each other. And they are both empowered to share feedback openly in both directions. And the relationship has expanded 
beyond the mere job description. So it's a well-rounded, high-quality relationship with lots of back and forth. Now, one of the criticisms of this theory is, well, how can you develop those? One of the early criticisms was we were telling us we're supposed to have high-quality relationships, but how do we get there? So research that came a bit later by Leiden and Maslin talked about how we can develop this in a way. They said that, well, when we ask over time, all of these leaders and members, they say that the high quality relationships that they have and experience and enjoy have three common qualities, liking, loyalty, and professional respect. So if you want to develop high quality relationships with the people on your team, here are the three ways that you can do it. The first one is to show liking and affect. Affect is just that positive expression. When you see someone, you light up a little bit. So these are the kinds of relationships where people like each other, the kinds of people you might describe as, oh, I have this friend at work. And even if you don't hang out outside of work, you, when you get to work, you enjoy being around this person. You like them. They like you. And it's a positive connection in that way. So that's the first quality of high quality relationships. The second quality is loyalty. The leader and the member must feel a sense of loyalty and obligation to each other, a sense that they have your back. They're going to look out for you. They're going to advocate for you, possibly defend you from criticism if it comes up publicly. So there's a sense that, okay, I'm looking out for you. You're looking out for me. And maybe if I hear about an opportunity or something that connects you, I'll make sure I bring it your way. They're looking out for each other. And the third is professional respect. So when we get to know people over time, maybe you learn that, oh, they're, they're a really high level soccer player outside of work. It could be something from their personal life that you respect or something on their resume, like they've won some awards, some achievements. They used to work at a really high status place. And you have noticed that the way they handle themselves in and around your workplace is impressive. You may admire their character. There's a professional respect that you show. And you may even tell them that directly and express that through communication. So the research shows that if you have these three mutual qualities in your relationship, then it would be much higher up on the LMX scale. If you're missing some of these or don't have any, clearly that's going to be a low quality relationship, low LMX on that scale. So question of the day, can you describe any high quality relationships that you may have with the people on your team, whether you're a supervisor or a follower? I would love to hear your answer to that question in the comment section below this video. I look forward to reading your comments. So until next time, I will see you soon.